First, um, the presentation is from uh, our colleague uh, Frank Collix from the University of uh, Munich, and he will uh, give us the latest data on image, imaging techniques for early detection of choroid cancer. Yes, uh, good morning, dear Dr. Ma, dear Professor from Kalle, um, dear colleagues. While I was preparing this talk, I looked up in PubMed, as many do, what about the references in this topic, and I found 1,500 um, publications on CT colonography, reviews excluded, and about 200 on um, MR colonography and 200 on capsule co um, and colon capsule endoscopy. And I want to give you a brief overview on the state of the art. CT colonography is performed after colon lavage. Optionally, gastrographene is added during the lavage. Um, then a multi-detector spiral CT is done in prone and supine position um, under insufflation of CO2 or air, no sedation, no IV contrast agent. The total examination time um, in the CT machine is about one minute. And then, as you can see here, a fly is through and 2 and 3D um, analysis is performed. And of course, what you need is a very experienced radiologist. CT colonography, if it finds something in 2D and 3D um, analysis, colonoscopy is performed. And if a polyp is um, um, found, then it can be removed. This is the principle of all these imaging strategies. It has been argued that CT colonography is not able to detect flat lesions. However, sensitivity for flat lesions is lower for CT colonography. However, we have identified several um, lesions, including this one, for example, which then could be found by colonoscopy and removed. I don't want to go into detail about CT colonography studies. There are several, and there are some very good ones and large ones. Just to look at the Pickard and the Johnson trials, which are about the most important ones, and also one study, which is from our group, um, which was the first European um, study um, on CT colonography in a screening population. and. Um, um, using low-dose CT colonography. And if you look at these data, then you find that sensitivity for adenoma above 6 millimeters and above 10 millimeters is quite high compared to colonoscopy, almost um, reaching sensitivity of colonoscopy. Another technique is colon capsule endoscopy. And this is the first large study on this um, um, tool with the first generation capsule. And as you see here, sensitivity for adenoma and for advanced adenoma and for cancer is around 60 to 70 percent. But the next generation colon capsule, which is under investigation now and is already on the market, has two images which um, have a white angel view with 172 degrees on both sides and um, makes adaptive pictures, 35 images per second when in motion and only four images when it is virtually stationary. And as you see below, sensitivities are very high, also approaching that what we've seen for CT colonography and is close to colonoscopy. And it has already been argued that colon capsule endoscopy might be a good tool for colorectal cancer screening. Still, there are several open questions. Evidence from last trials is quite good for CT, but it is not present for colon capsule endoscopy. Colon lavage is required for both, so this is no advantage compared to colonoscopy, though some um, minimal prep protocols have been presented for CT colonography. Two important issues for CT colonography are radiation exposure and extracolonic findings. If you go into radiation-related cancer risks from CT colonography, we just want to look at one study which I found very interesting. And here they looked at the benefit risk ratio for an average of 3.5 individuals screened um, between the age of 50 and 80 based on 100 screened persons. And based on three different models, they calculated that by using CT colonography, about 3,500 to 5,000 colorectal cancers could be prevented. 
However, at the same time, 150 radiation-induced cancers would appear, resulting in a risk-benefit ratio of 24 to 35 cancers prevented and one induced. Looking at cancer deaths, the number of cancer uh, deaths prevented would be between 2,080 and 2,800, radiation-induced cancer deaths around 60, and here again, a benefit-risk ratio of 35 to 47 cancers prevented and van induced. So this um, gives us an idea about the risk of the radiation. Um, still, there is obviously a benefit from the screening, but we must be aware of the age of the person who is receiving CT colonography. Certainly the risk is higher in younger than in older people. One solution to avoid radiation would be MR colonography. However, evidence is poor for this method, even though it is discussed a lot. There are only eight major colonography studies, and major is um, not really the right word. That is studies with at least 100 participants. There are only two studies in asymptomatic populations and only one study adhering to current standards of CT colonography studies, which was published by our group in last year. What did we do? Individuals received a fecal or cold blood test with three samples. Then lavage was performed, three Tesla MRI was done, and in MRI um, colonography, contrast um, agent is applied, which is not the case for CT colonography. Then segmentally unblinded colonoscopy was done, and if um, there was a discrepancy between CT and colonoscopy findings, a second look um, endoscopy of the respective segment was done. We were able to identify the polyp on this, um, on this picture. Of course, it is here, and in real life, it looks like this. So in the per polyp analysis, we find that MR colonography is not able to detect lesions which are called diminutive. They are in the size of one to five millimeters. However, going into larger lesions of 10 millimeters, there's a sensitivity approach is 90%. And also for advanced um, lesions um, of six millimeters and larger sensitivity of MR colonography is approaching that of CT colonography. In the per patient analysis, so meaning is MR colonography able to detect or identify individuals carrying um, adenoma or advanced adenoma, we find quite a high sensitivity for MR colonography between 80 and 90 percent for lesions above six millimeters or advanced neoplasia. And compared to the conventional GUIAC based FOBT, um, where only 10 to 20 percent of lesions were identified, MR colonography is much closer to colonoscopy. Extracolonic findings is another important issue for these imaging techniques, and these are indeed a double-edged sword. It has been reported that about 6% of individuals screened by CT colonography undergo further evaluation for extracolonic findings by then usually conscious enhanced CT or MRI or alternatively ultrasound or surgery. These might have potential benefits like early diagnosis of curable disease, but also potential harms due to anxiety and potential complications associated with the workup of eventually irrelevant lesions. I want to exemplify this on the findings of three renal masses in our MR colonography studies. All of these three patients were operated for these renal masses. Two turned out to be early stage T1 renal cancer. So these two patients definitely um, benefited from this. One was an oncocytoma, which, which uh, was a diagnosis the patients would probably never had any problem with. But there are more open questions. Referral rate to colonoscopy in case of positive findings <coughs> is um, closely correlated to cost efficiency. Just want to give you one example based on the um, results of our MR colonography study. So if everybody in this population would receive colonoscopy, colonoscopy referral rate would be 100 and potentially all advanced neoplasia would have been detected, not discussing potentially not seen lesions by colonoscopy. And the number needed to screen to find advanced adenoma would have been 15.9. 
If we only would have referred those to colonoscopy with a positive fecal or cold blood test, then the referral rate would have been 8.4%. Patients with advanced neoplasia would only have been detected in 17% of cases, and the number needed to screen would have been 7.7. If we would have referred everybody with a positive finding on MR colonography, the referral rate would have been 23% and 83% of individuals with advanced neoplasia would have been detected. The number needed to screen is quite low, with 4.4. And if we have a threshold of lesions of at least 6 millimeters for referral, then referral rate is down to 14%, but we have a lower number of advanced neoplasia detected, and the number needed to screen is only 3. Maybe it's not the right, this right choice only to refer those with larger lesions. Maybe we should take into account risk factors and we identified as important risk factors age, multiplicity of polyps and morpholo uh, morphology of polyps summing up in a risk index and demonstrating that if individuals have polyps um, in the size below five millimeters and they have these risk factors, the number needed to screen in this population to identify um, advanced um, neoplasia is growing higher and approaching the risk of, of uh, bigger lesions. So maybe not only size, but also risk factors should be taken into account here. Another important issue is cost effectiveness. Effectiveness. So in this study by Landstorp, um, three different referral um, scenarios were um, studied either intensive referral, so referring everybody with any lesion, intermediate referral, only referring individuals with um, lesion six millimeters or larger, and minimal referral, meaning only referral of individuals with lesions 10 millimeters or larger. <coughs> CTC and coloscopy, colonoscopy, if they cost the same, then there is certainly an advantage for colonoscopy in terms of cost effectiveness. If, they, if CTC costs half of colonoscopy, then it's more or less equal, but if the CTC would only cost a third of what a colonoscopy cost, which is um, not practical, um, then there would be an advantage for CTC. So if we take two different scenarios, then there might be one. If individuals do not receive screening colonoscopy, they currently receive FOBT in Germany, and if that is positive, they receive colonoscopy. Alternatively, one could do these imaging techniques I just presented before. Another scenario could be to have people do an FOBT, and if they are positive, then do imaging, and if that is positive, then do colonoscopy. Let's discuss the first issue first, and this is a study from Holland where 8,800 individuals were included in the study and invited to either colonoscopy or randomly assigned to CTC. And if you look at these numbers, you find out that the acceptance rate of CT colonography was about 50% higher than acceptance rate of colonoscopy um, in this study. If you look at the yield, per 100 participants, so patients included in the study and invited, then there is an advantage for colonoscopy in detecting advanced neoplasia. But if you look at those um, which have, no, this was the group they actually took part in the screening, and those being invited, then you see there is no difference between both groups. This is the result of the higher acceptance rate of CT colonography in this study. In, the, in England, an FOBT-based screening is offered to the population, and positive FOBT um, results in referral to colonoscopy. If colonoscopy does not appear to be feasible, for example, due to anticoagulants, due to comorbidities, um, then patients are offered CT colonography. And what they have reported here just recently is that in this setting, colonoscopy appears to detect much more lesions in all categories than CT colonography. However, there are two points of bias here. One is that only those were referred to CT colonography who would have been poor candidates 
for colonoscopy. So we have a bias here, and the other bias is that the colonoscopists were much better trained and qualified than the radiologists analyzing CT colonography. So we can't use this study to claim that CTC um, is much worse than colonoscopy. The same might um, be applied to um, colon capsule endoscopy, as you can see in this recently published small study, colon capsule endoscopy and CT chronography in the setting of positive FOBT might have similar sensitivities in detecting relevant lesions. To summarize, in my eyes, CT chronography um, appears to be a feasible tool for colorectal cancer screening. We can't say this currently for MR colonography and colon capsule endoscopy because large prospective studies are pending. However, before we can use CT colonography or really recommend it, several critical issues need to be resolved. One is radiation exposure, the other is the handling of extracolonic findings, and then the probably very important issues in terms of the um, cost effectiveness, a referral rate, and cutoff size for referral to colonoscopy. Thank you very much. Thank you very much for this excellent overview on uh, the state of the art regarding imaging. Are there questions to Dr. Colleagues? I have uh, one burning one. Um, uh, you did uh, this uh, uh, um, analysis of the various strategies, uh, starting from the current uh, FOBT, the Guayac based. That's right. Did you do uh, um, analogous calculations for the more modern immunochemical tests? No, we didn't run this in the study, but this would certainly be what we would do today. We didn't do that at that, that time. That would be very interesting. Mm -hmm. yeah. Okay. Uh, Professor Colleagues, how important is it to really de detect all diminutive polyps? We know that only 6% of patients of men will get uh, colon cancer. Is it really necessary to detect, to detect all these small polyps? Because in these days the adenoma detection rate is one of the proposals for the endoscopist. Yes, I agree that it is an important issue. When um, the American radiologists came up with a suggestion not to follow up on lesions um, s smaller than six millimeters, um, all gastroenterologists were screaming that this um, would be awful because we would lose many patients with cancer. It's still probably right, as it is very rare that, um, these lay, that these diminutive lesions are advanced neoplasia or cancer, and also only a small rate of these will um, move forward to cancer. So the issue is not, um, it has not been finally settled, but it is under discussion, and that's what, what you probably mean is that one is discussing also just um, ignoring these and just to wait if they grow larger and to find them in the next, um, in the next screening round. Um, I think in terms of cost effectiveness for these um, imaging technologies, one would rather ignore the diminutive lesions, though, as I showed on one slide, there might be um, indications for removing them, especially if there are several. Um, if patients are elder um, and the third risk factor is certainly the morphology, so um, pedunculated um, lesions appear to have a much higher risk than s very small flat lesions. Oh, thank you. One last question. Uh, Arbel from Tel Aviv. In a way, I'm happy because I'm a gastroenterologist and to learn these shocking uh, results of 150 inductions of tumor is it will help me to persuade my patients, but maybe it's too much. It's too much because it's maybe you can elude more about it because if it's done around the age of 50 or 60, it's hard to believe that so many uh, tumors will be induced by single virtual colonoscopy. Of course, these are, these are um, models which are based on, on, on radiation risk in general. And what they also point out, if you go into more detail, that if you do the CT colonography in an individual at age 40, it makes a big difference to somebody where it's done at the age 70. Yeah, so the risk of inducing cancer decreases with age. So I guess if we discuss about CT colonography, we should discuss it in the really adult population, maybe above 50, maybe even above 60, where it probably doesn't really do that much harm, but definitely not in a, in a, in a family risk population age 40 to 50. Okay, thank you very much. I'm afraid we have to go on.